Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Music Talks podcast. I'm your host Bobby Rose. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, yes, this does look different. I'm kind of adapting to a new uh, background right now, just for this uh, MCO lockdown. If you have been paying attention to the past episode, uh, which was recorded on the first week of MCO as well, uh, yeah, the third MCO just started, so we're all trying our best to settle into another phase of lockdown. Hooray, right? So, uh, as a fun, fun little way of trying to spice things up, I'm just getting a bit out of my circle, my music circle, and I'm talking to a friend of mine that I, uh, I, I don't know, we don't really talk. We haven't really spoken for like more than a year now. A um, uh, friend of, let's just say, friend that we have performed together once. Yes, we have. A decade ago. So, ladies and gentlemen, from Yong Suto of Singapore, Miss Zoe Hong. Hi, everyone. My name is Zoe Hong, and I'm a classically trained soprano. Uh, as Bobby said, I am currently studying in the Yong Suto Conservatory of Music in Singapore. Um, before that, I was studying my diploma in Malaysian Institute of Arts, and yeah, I went to Yong Suto from there. Fantastic. Uh, I'll just tell you exactly the same thing that uh, I told Adam Sharawi because last time I did record him as well. I am so jealous of the fact that you guys can still go and have physical classes. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we are quite blessed in that sense. I think also because uh, Singaporeans tend to be more law-abiding, I would say. So they were really good about wearing their masks, uh, social distancing. That's why we could afford to have um, our physical classes. Nice. And do you still go back every every day? I, I don't know. What's the situation like there? Ah, well, it was getting better from when I started, but it has gotten worse right now. And... I think we are pretty close into lockdown. We went from zero cases a day to now about like 30, 40 cases a day. So now um, no dine-ins allowed. And mm-hmm. well, now we're on summer vacation. So we don't have to worry about classes. But the way it's looking right now, our next semester might be online again. Oh, okay. So you do have to go through those online sessions. It's not just us, it's you guys as well. Mm-hmm. But um, I guess our faculty is a bit special. We have a lot of our classes physically, actually, for me at least. Uh, of course, we follow all the SOP very, very strictly. Mm-hmm. But um, I think because our faculty is kind of small and the classes also very, very small, the ones I take, the biggest class was like maybe 10, 20 people. That's why um, we can afford to spread ourselves out in a room and therefore have classes physically. Nice, nice. So, so can you just like break down a, a daily life for you? Like from your, the moment you wake up all the way to the end. Like, because I know that you're really still active up, up till like last month when you had your recital. So what's, what's daily life for you in university? Okay, so for me, the first thing is, I would say my day starts not when I wake up, but at 12 a.m. Because okay. that is when I'm a night person. So at night, my brain is super, super active. And that's when I get all my work done. Mm-hmm. So my day starts at 12 a.m. when I do some of my homework and um, do my homework, you know chat with friends, play games, very important. Yeah. Then try to catch like a few hours of sleep, wake up begrudgingly, (laughs) then get ready. And most days I really have a full, full day of class. Like I get in um, at 10 a.m. And I sometimes have classes up until three. So it's just a full day, very, very tiring. After that, um, of course, as musicians, we have to practice. Mm -hmm. But for vocal majors, it's quite different. I have um, instrumentalist friends who practice like four or five hours a day. Mm -hmm. But for singers, it's like an hour a day, maximum. Maximum. And per session, it's only half an hour. That's what I'm doing now. 
Oh, okay. And then besides practicing singing, I would also practice piano sometimes mm-hmm. if I'm in the mood for it. <laughs> and yeah, then really it's just a whole cycle. Go home, chill, talk to my family. And yeah, it goes back. I do my homework and I go to sleep. Yeah. It has been like that for the whole year, basically. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so you put it here. The secret to success is essentially just have little sleep. If you want to be a great musician, <laughs> little sleep and one hour a day practice. That's it. Oh, sorry. You yeah, said what, half an hour? Half an hour. That's it. Half an hour. You're fine. You're fine. For, for all the singers out there that are listening to this or watching this episode, if people ask, why do you only practice half an hour? I don't want to spread COVID. Right? That's your oh. intention. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're, you're being a people's person, right? You're, you're trying your... Honestly, yeah, I'm doing it for the people. Exactly. <laughs> Is that what you tell yourself before you sleep? Just to sleep better? <laughs> yeah, if I, if I do sleep. <laughs> oh, that's fair. So, um, I, I, I just gotta... We just gotta take it back like a few steps uh, back. Like, where did you come from? And where do you go? I, I don't... Okay, it sounded like a Cotton Night Joe. <laughs> I mean, like, oh. what you were before this, you were in MIA, Malaysian Institute mm-hmm. of Arts, for those of you that do not know. She was from MIA. And then you, you're now in uh, Yon Suto. So, how did that transition happen? Um, well, when, okay, I started in music pretty late, actually. I started my formal singing lessons when I was. 20. I'm 24 this year. Mm-hmm. Hey, wait, no, no. I started when I was 19. Sorry. I started when I was 19. You want me to and add it up entered... that part about your age? Nah. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of being an older lady. Exactly. An older. Okay. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I started pretty late at about 19. Then I, I enrolled into MIA. But at that point, I was so, so fresh. I, I knew nothing about music, really. And I had to audition into MIA, and they played an interval, and they asked me, what interval is that? And I was like, oh, what is an interval? You know, I was, so, I was so new to music. But thankfully, I got in. You know, I, I worked really hard to work on my, musician ski, uh, my musicianship, my singing and all those general subjects then yeah halfway towards the end of my last semester I was just thinking about you know what the next step was and um, yeah I just I heard about Yong Suto and honestly the first thing that really attracted me to Yong Suto was the fact that it was completely free and I thought that it was like a myth, you know, like a legend. How can a school give everything for free? But it's true. Um, so I auditioned in. Thankfully, I got in. I'm very, very thankful. Yeah. So yeah, now I get to enjoy and enjoy life basically in Singapore. Nice. But can can you just like clarify that it's it's free as in like you ah okay. So yeah. for us, they Yong Suto. They are really, really very generous. They, they are paying for our tuition. They pay for our accommodation. And we get allowance as well. Oh, okay. So, yeah, they are treating us really well. And we have, you know, all NUS students have uh, insurance. You know, we have free health care. So, they really take good care of us. Oh, okay. Do they, do they actually, like, uh, is this like a scholarship based thing or anybody who applies there just like yeah come on over yeah, we need ev- more people <laughs> honestly everyone that is accepted into Yong Suto is given the full scholarship which is super amazing yeah yeah but then you know getting in is the problem lah you know yeah. <laughs> it's not easy to get in mm. yeah but everyone that gets in gets that benefit so what do you do there your um performance student uh, I, I do recall yes. like, there's only performance right? there's no I mean like only the performance composition and education right? there's no like 
uh, music production there or all the other niche oh. areas? Is there? Well, for a, I think for a long time, it was only performance majors. But for now, they added some newer ones. There's one that's called like um, a music and society major. And also a really cool one. Do you call it AAS? Audio Arts and Science. So mm. these are the students that come in to learn how to record and stuff like that. And they're super, super useful in the school because all of our concerts are being live streamed now. So they are the ones who handle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would think that uh, YST actually does a good job on um, building a community so that your synergy actually mm. works together. Yeah, it's awesome. Definitely. Yeah. So what's the crowd like there? Like, you know, talking about the mindset of the people um, uh, at the students or even the people that attend performances. I mean, you know, before okay. COVID. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, first of all, I guess it's something that I would have expected, but I have a lot of international friends. I really have friends from, you know, all over the world. I know people from like... Um, South America, people from Ukraine, Russia, Korea, Japan, just people from all over the world. And it's so nice to see everyone being brought to one place mm -hmm. and we all get to learn about all our cultures. So um, I would say that it is quite competitive in YST, but I think it's like so amazing to be in a community where you know, there are so many people from different backgrounds all trying to help each other improve. Yeah, I really like that about YST. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what, what about the, the lecturers, the, all the teachers? That, like, yeah. I, do, they, yeah. They, do they just like go, bring you through that whiplash motion of every single day you're not on my temple, even though you are? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, personally... My major, my major teacher, um, his name is uh, Prof. Ellen Bennett, and he's an American tenor. He is like a fantastic teacher. He's super chill, super funny. He, he likes to say that like, um, there's, then, there's no point scolding a, a singer, a student, because you know, they just clench up and they can't sing properly. But he also like got scold me. So I'm like, ooh. Thanks, but it's super helpful and I think it's just um, a very different approach and I took one of uh, another class called uh, what is it what where and when is art mm -hmm. so my lecturer is also an American and the way he approaches things is I guess very different from what maybe you and I were um, brought up with like in you know from primary school to SPM you know we are just taught to kind of like memorize everything and throw it up yeah but yeah. these classes teach me how to think for myself which is something that I found to be very very difficult yeah, it, but it's a great challenge yeah is that like a you you keep this like the second time that you're mentioning a sociological aspect that individualism philosophy that sociological philosophy is that an overall YST thing or it's just something that you picked up on? Yeah, I I guess it's something that I just happened to observe. Yeah. Hmm. And and is it just a, I, I'm not pushing you for another agenda because the. I don't know if you remember, I, I do study music psychology, so I might oh, inadvertently. You do? Yeah. So I Fantastic. might just yeah, I might just inadvertently, you know, go into a psychological side. But it does seem like a plausible field for you guys, right? Especially with that uh, mm. all those AAS studies and these uh phil philosophy studies. I mean, I, I consider this what was it again? Past, present, and future? No. W what, what where, where and what what? Where and when is art? Yeah. Do, do, does it go yeah. into like, like deep philosophy thinking? Like, like, oh, like you just sit there and think. What's your final exam? Like just sit there and think about art. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When the first few weeks into that class, I was just sitting in class and I was just looking at the lecturer going like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> like, it's, it was like super like, 
moment, you know. Everything he said makes sense, but made no sense at the same time. And That's one of our meta. homework was, yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. One of our homework was that uh, we had to write about like a hundred, hundred fifty word, uh, just a short essay of. It's like a. I guess our point of views on certain topics that he would give. So we have you know the main idea, supporting idea, supporting detail, those kind of things, and. Every single week, uh, it's always due Sunday eleven fifty nine. So every week, Sunday eleven thirty, I would be sitting at my desk going, "What is going on? How do I answer this? I don't understand anything." But after having taken that class for the entire semester, like I'm telling you, like oh my brain just spinning for like always everything people tell me, I'd be like. Okay, but what's your main idea? Supporting idea. Oh yeah, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So yeah, I really, really helped. Yeah, nice. Really enjoyed that class. Uh, I assume now you can like you can push it to eleven forty. It just yeah. It, it used to take I'm like twenty minutes. Never gonna take that class. <laughs> <laughs> never gonna take that class ever. Yeah, that's fair. And and you did mention like um you do mingle a b- a bit with the uh, internationals. I guess when you yourself are an international student, you tend to oh, view, yeah. right? Oh yeah, I, right. Yeah. I, I have had many of my um cohort mates go up to me and go like, "You're Singaporean, right?" Then I'm like, "No, I'm Malaysian." They're like, "Huh? You're Malaysian?" And everyone goes like. Everyone thought you were Singaporean, and I was like, mm, I don't know why you would think that. Yeah. But yeah, I guess maybe because you know, Singapore, Malaysia, eh, same same. You know? Yeah, it's it's quite vague, but but it it sounds to me like you're you're saying like um the sense of musicality, how they speak, how they view things. It's it's quite similar. Do do you mm. feel that way or? Well. I think another thing about studying overseas is the exposure that I get. I think in when I was studying in Malaysia at MIA, um, my circle was so small, you know, mm-hmm. and I never really got to explore a lot of ideas. And the people that I usually hung out with, we would normally have the same ideas, the same opinions, and stuff like that. So. Yeah, suddenly being pushed into like, I guess being an international student, together with students from all over the world, it really um, challenges your beliefs, your standings. You know. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair, and especially when you have to go out of that bubble, right? Like, like you said. Yeah. 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 So when you said like you have your beliefs challenge, I I I would think like your principles and all like. Does it actually affect the? Um, is there an amplitude of difference when it comes to you performing now, compared to when you were five, six years ago? I mean, like, we're not talking about maturity. Everybody looks back at their older performances and they think, "What's wrong? What is that kid doing?" But you know, like between performing on your, um, I don't know, your home base and com- comparing to when when you are performing now, is it different? Do you feel like it's different? I think, well, sadly, like I've been here for one year, but I have only ever performed once, like a live performance, which is mm-hmm. very sad because I'm a performance major. Mm-hmm. But then, um, I guess it's before even the performance. Like for me, I place a very very strong emphasis on, uh, music education. Musicianship, and basically like the workings that makes a person a better musician and not just a better performer, and this point of view clashes very very strongly with many people at YST, because there are some people not all, but you know you know we have all sorts of people. Mm-hmm. There are people who are they strongly believe that. They are here to play their instruments, and that is all they are going to do. So, like yeah. musicianship, like by theory, like who is she? You know, like they yeah. just 
focus on the instrument so so much. So yeah. that really like uh, but you no, know, we I respect our differences. Yeah. But then in regards to performance, definitely I think it's different performing here and performing back home. Mm. Over here it's like first of all the, the first the only perf- first and first only and last performance of my first year mm-hmm. uh, my teacher was watching so you know you see him in the crowd like watching you going like <laughs> so you know you have that pressure to show him that like both of you were not wasting your time for the entire year that went by yeah. and you have the weight of the school's name because chances are if people hear like oh this is a performance by YST students that must you know it must be a pretty good show because I High guess expectations, YST, right? you know yeah I one yeah expectations is the the word for it I carry a lot of people's expectations on my shoulders and yeah it's sometimes it can be stressful but I just think of it as like just one of the many ways that I can elevate my level of performance. And also, uh, I guess I want, I would like to mengharumkan nama of my country mm-hmm. so that people won't go like, wow, that Malaysian ah, so many problems. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Mm, I want yeah. people to be like, oh, this Malaysian like, is you know can work with and I hope to work with more Malaysians in the future. That's kind yeah. of what I I'm aiming for. Awesome. And I, I feel like um this just stop me if I'm wrong. I, I feel like that that stress that's really needed for for to, to actually push us to go a bit above and beyond. If you were before this on a scale of one to ten you're performing eight and that stress is needed to push you to nine. And even when you're performing at 9.5, now you want to get to 9.8. You still need that stress, right? To push. Yeah. Definitely, right. definitely. Yeah. Right, okay, just one very short question. You did mention mm. the one and only physical performance that you did that one time. Just a random question. Do you have some kind of like Zoom show or Google Meet performance or something like a? I'm pretty sure everyone has it, but I just want to see if it's different for YST students. Do you have like, a, I don't know, a collective choir class or something? Yeah, okay. Very interesting about that. Yeah. Uh, for first and second year students, uh, for first and second year voice students, we have this compulsory module called Chamber Singers. Mm-hmm. And normally this is, um, I get, I would guess it's a pretty fun module because this module is open to students outside of YST. So it's open to other NUS students mm-hmm. and they can get in by, you know, auditions and stuff. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, just to clarify, I'm not really sure what that is. What, what's NUS? Oh, NUS is the University of Singapore, National University of Singapore. Singapore, right, right, right. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, normally it would be super super fun because i'm a choir kid i grew up with choir you know my high school choir so i was really looking forward to it but because of this pandemic uh no group singing is allowed obviously Mm. and the whole chamber singers was just reduced to the year one and year two students which is like six people (laughs) six seven people Mm. and because we couldn't have rehearsals in, uh, in person, we couldn't perform, we had to do everything on Zoom. And that yeah. is just the most miserable thing in my life. Every week, twice a week, we would, you know, meet together in a Zoom call, you know, have all that initial 10 minutes of, hello, can you hear me? Hello, hello, I cannot hear you, you know. Yeah. I can't, you the know? most asked questions just- for students. Yeah. yeah. So it went from really like um a, a module that I really, really was so excited to take to like uh, a sleeper mod, we call it. Yeah, and at the end of it, 
after all the rehearsals, we had to record like individually record audio and then record video separately and then splice it together, do all the mixing, all the video editing and then submit it. Which like, for me, I was, I'm a noob at mixing. I'm a noob at mixing at like, you know, editing and stuff like that. It took a lot of time to get used to. Yeah. 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 I, I, I feel like that's a very important thing. The, the important thing is not really to just, you try it once and it sucks and then you try it a second time and it sucks less but then you don't want to try it at all anymore after that no it's it's supposed to be like you try it once it's bad and then by the fifth and sixth time it's better and then i i'm i'm pretty sure you've done a lot of it over the course of one year right like course of two semesters but you did get better at it right eventually i guess so but <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I just wish that we could just sing in a group. You know, none of yeah. this Zoom stuff. I mean, yeah, Zoom, you know, brings people together, especially I guess Zoom is actually very, very necessary at a time like this. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> no Zoom choir. <laughs> yeah. Zoom choir should be banned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Thank you so much for sharing all all of your experiences and all. And then, um, I did want to ask like a uh an overall blanket question, right? So, is there um? It sounds like such an amazing place to be at this YST, but do you think that there is a uh, a demographic, a specific demographic, that shouldn't go to YST? I'm not downplaying YST as a whole, but do you think that Oh, okay, let me spin this another way. Should every music student attend YST in your own perspective? Non-COVID, non, uh, what do you call that? Um, the voice competition thing, that chamber oh, choir. Yeah, chamber, Zoom choir. Zoom choir thing, yeah. So let's get that all out of the way, right? Um, if it's like under normal circumstances, do you think every kind of music student should attend YST or universities and colleges? around the same level? Very good question. Very good. Okay. So um, essentially, I feel like YST currently, the way it is now, um, there is a very strong emphasis on Western classical music. And so if you want to be like, let's say a jazz pianist or like, you know, any any genre that is not classical, classical. or mm -hmm. to an extent contemporary, mm. I feel like if you come to YSD, it would benefit you in the sense that um, your raw skill, your technique, your knowledge, exposure, everything, yeah, your fundamentals, mm. they will be like definitely exponentially increased. But um, at the end of the day, if your end goal is not something classical, then I would say you can consider going somewhere else. Definitely, there's an emphasis on Western classical music. Although, um, I do have some uh, cohort mates that play traditional, traditional Chinese instruments, mm -hmm. but they are not really considered performance majors. They are doing the other like non-performance courses. Ethnographical studies and so on. Uh, mm, I think we have those modules, but not the like major. For those students, they are still majoring in, uh, like the music and society. Right, um, right. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. I understand the game. So, the minute you go into like cultural studies or educational studies, then it just falls under sociology. Something like that, I think. Yeah. But yeah, there is no performance, performance major for like you know, jazz, pop. Are there any other genres? No, just pop. Contemporary, just pop traditional, classical. traditional. Contem yeah. Traditional, oh yeah, traditional yeah. falls under that one. Yeah. Yeah, not not really. Yeah, because uh I, I do keep thinking about what you said, like uh uh that contemporary side, the jazz side, okay, it's out of the picture, right? But if you actually just compile everything together, so we got business, which uh doesn't really exist. Uh, we have uh, education, it does. 
performances obviously composition obviously uh what else all the sociological uh, studies all the ethno musical musicology so it does cover a wide spectrum but the only thing in your perspective right this we're just talking about perspectives uh the only thing that's lacking is just the genre genre studies the wide variety of genre studies right mm, i would think so but then again um i'm not an instrumentalist and i'm sh i have many friends who you know definitely can play more than one genre you know they can play a concerto and the next moment they are just jamming you know there are people like that definitely mm -hmm. but wait hold up you mm -hmm. mean like they just like jam concerto it's just like can you give me concerto in b flat and like... no, <laughs> two five one that concerto. Are... <laughs> That, no, sadly, not not yet, maybe. Not yet, maybe. yeah. Uh -huh. Not yet. But yeah, there are, I don't know. I guess I just don't see that mix of genres yet, maybe. Mm -hmm. But for me, you know, I am classically trained, but that doesn't mean like I don't want to sing songs from like a musical. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So... Actually, I believe that um, what you learn in YC is just the fundamentals and what you learn here, um, if you are smart about it, you can apply to literally anything. Yeah, that's so true, I guess yeah. that's the two sides of it. Yeah. yeah. If you're willing to bear with the fundamentals here, you will definitely benefit. I I'm just, um, <clears throat> I I'm, I'm trying to gauge the path the developmental path for music students in OIST specifically, do you choose where you want to go based on your, you know, current bachelor studies? Or do you choose what universities you want to go based on the plan you already have? That's, uh, that's what I'm trying to gauge here. What do you think? Well, I think I am one of the more uncommon uh, types of people in the sense that I don't really have a plan besides knowing that I want to eventually do my master's and PhD. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of my cohort mates, for them, is like straight up just performance. Like no education, no nothing, just straight up performance. So... Um, I guess in a sense, YC really helps with that because there is a very strong emphasis on performance in YST. Yeah, mm. yeah that, that's true when you put it that way because on the other hand, I do have to admit that the very heart, the very root of music subject, music studies is still performance. Music, mm. no matter what kind of music you do, even for people like me, at the heart of it is still an art. Definitely. And, and yeah, without... We, I feel like without mastery over your major instrument, you eh, can't really do... Yeah, you can go into like things that don't require performances like education, therapy, psychology. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we are, we are here in YST to be better musicians, I feel, not just performers. If you are just here to improve your raw performance skill, like, you know, up to you, great, you know, all the best. But I feel like there is so much more that um, I personally can gain from YST because the education is just top-notch. I'm learning so much every single day. So, actually, yeah, really depends on the person. <laughs> all right, that, that's fair, that's fair. Um, just trying to, trying to gauge... Uh, I'm just trying to gauge that um, mindset of an assimilated Malaysian Singaporean uh, musician such as yourself. So, because I'm very sure if I ask a full Malaysian about YST, it'll be different. I'm very sure if I ask a full Singaporean, it'll be different. So, now that you've been on both sides of the world, so I'm trying to see if there is really a, a point of contention between these mm -hmm. different educational institutes. So, yeah. I really respect your answer. It actually depends on, it actually depends on where we do want to go. So anytime somebody in the streets just stop you like, 
you're doing performance you're doing you're doing like music performance like what what's your plans like covid all the shows are closed like no it's it's part of the plan or rather it's part of my plan you know yeah yeah you yeah. know i get that a lot from uh maybe friends family that mm-hmm. go like huh you study music ah? yeah. how can you earn money you know stuff like that but i guess it is our job to calm down what i learned calm down not attack back and explain to them that there is so much more to music than just pure performance there is really a whole world out there that you know is open for a musician not just performance i feel mm-hmm. it's you very just have true. to know what you want yeah that's very true so this is the last question just to sum it all up like What's your plan? You did mention like postgraduate studies. Like, what's your plan after this? So, um, I am like, I'm really inspired by the people who got me into music in the first place. Like my my first voice teacher, Mr. Mark Chiho. Mm-hmm. You know, I think you know him, yeah. Miss Susanna. Yeah. So, you know. I'm really, really inspired by them to be more than just a performer. Like, they are no doubt, like, top, top tier performers. But there is so much more that they did for the Malaysian music scene than just performing. You know, they started mm-hmm. up choirs. Um, they really did a lot of education, a lot of outreach. And, you know, through them doing all these things i was able to be involved in music so i feel a strong sense of wanting to do the same mm-hmm. so uh besides performance i really want to go into definitely music education a bit of um music psychology as well i think that is very important mm-hmm. and possibly even music therapy because i feel like it's not very common first mm-hmm. of all and it is something that combines two of my interests you know one uh, music and helping people yeah and yeah i just feel like the path that i am on right now it's going to it's not easy definitely you know have all the oh where am i going to get money and stuff like that but i feel like the end goal to be able to help people through my passion of music is just something that is so special and i know that i am very blessed to be able to do this because you know in malaysia you don't find a lot of people who study music and i personally know a lot of people who are fantastic musicians but you know their parents stop them or they stop themselves because they feel like you know they should get a sustainable job you know yeah, so they yeah. stop music but i guess i'm also here to show that that doesn't have to be the case you can follow your passions and still make it something sustainable yeah awesome So uh ladies and gentlemen if you are intrigued to find out more uh Mr. Machiho and Susanna Saw they are based in um uh Young Choral Academy that's the one you can actually yeah, find right. them in Young Choral Academy and MIA Malaysian Institute of Arts no joke all you have to do is just google top Malaysian uh, singer no not Malaysian singers Malaysian classical singers Malaysian musicians and they'll be at the forefront of the classical and traditional performances right now and uh yeah as if if you have been following this channel for a while and if you're still listening to this episode i really hope that you have I'm pretty sure that you have uh the magic word is always help and i'm glad to be able to hear that same a sentiment from a friend of us from YST And if you do have any questions, uh, any thoughts about any of the topics that we talked about today, why you think YST is like the best university in the world, shout out. Just like pass them to us. Send us an email at aminbob13 at yahoo.com. 
uh, either Zoe Hong or um, any future guests will get back to you promptly in the following episodes. And for this episode, the where uh, this is us signing off. Uh, Zoe, anything else you want to add? Um, my life motto: do whatever you want as long as it doesn't hurt anyone. That's really it at the end of the day. Fantastic. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, stay safe. Take care of everyone, and we'll see you in the next one. Right? Thank you so much. Bye.